child of the
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. I'm Father John Dillon, the pastor of St. Francis of Assisi Parish. Merry Christmas. Welcome to St. Francis Parishioners, those of you who do not attend Mass, those who attend Mass regularly with us, and those of you who have found us by chance on your YouTube channel. Welcome to all. St. Francis offers Sunday Mass virtually by YouTube, premiering at 10 a.m. each Sunday morning. We also celebrate a virtual Mass via YouTube each Wednesday evening, premiering at 7 o'clock. These can be viewed at any time after they premiere on the St. Francis YouTube channel. Come join us. We're pleased to bring you this Mass from the Church to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior. Text has been added so that you can participate in Mass prayers and sing the Christmas hymns along with our cantor. I ask you to sit, stand, and kneel during the appropriate times that you would during Mass, if you're able, so that, so that your liturgical experience at home reflects the sanctity of the in-person Mass. We join together to celebrate the birth of our Lord and our anticipation of his second coming to us on earth. It's been quite a year together. We realize how much we need Christ in each other. Now let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned for fuel and flames. <laughs> For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonderful Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, and Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Today, today, today is my 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee to the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields, and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, we've just listened to Luke's story of the birth and first revelation of Jesus, Son of God and Son of Mary. It's a story that's filled with paradox. Now the birth of Jesus takes place during the reign of Caesar Augustus, 
who ruled from 27 years before Christ until 14 AD over the whole world, or at least the world, known, the world that was known at the time to them. Augustus Caesar was also known for bringing a peaceful respite after years of strife, civil strife. An ancient inscription celebrates the birth of Caesar Augustus as good news for the whole world. Yet Jesus, whose parents are from the little known town of Nazareth on the fringe of the empire of Caesar Augustus, is laid in a manger, he is Messiah and Lord, and he will bring peace to those on whose shoulders his favor rests. His birth is not announced in city squares throughout the empire, but to shepherds, a group often scorned by the religious elite of the day. Now the beauty of Luke's narrative and its influence on Christian art, literature, and music remind us that through the Incarnation, the human condition is just suffused with the beauty of God. Still, the contemporary marketing of Christmas can, mark this, can mask the stark reality of Jesus' birth. Now, St. Ignatius of Loyola instructs us in his spiritual exercises that when we contemplate the Nativity, we should see how the persons in the scene are laboring so that Jesus may be born in the greatest poverty and that after so many hardships of hunger, thirst, cold, injuries, and insults, he may die on the cross. Now Luke may be hinting at this by this use of the same term for what we translate as in, that did not welcome Mary and Joseph, and for the guest room, where Jesus celebrates his final supper the night before he died, and there speaks of his body, which will be given for you, and his blood, which will be shed for you. The shadow of the cross falls even on the crash of Bethlehem. So taken together, the Luke's, narr Luke's narrative that we just heard at the ma at, at, at Mass, you know, just now, and the Gospel that, that could be read during the day, which is a hymn in the first chapter of St. John, they both emphasize the paradox of Christian faith in the Incarnation, truly human, truly divine, eternal word, a life unfolding in history. This paradox is also a point of tension. The high Christology of John, you see in John chapter 1, can envelop the human Jesus. Neglect of the transcendent word made flesh can reduce Jesus to a compassionate social prophet or an innocent martyr. It's another, and there's another paradox. When we as Christians gather to pray at Christmas, we must recall that the life and death of Jesus are not only for us, but through the word now incarnate, whose life and this life is for the light of the human race. The human condition has been radically changed by the coming of Christ, and this is a cause for, uh, to borrow the words of the angel in our gospel reading, good news of great joy. Mm -hmm. A final thought. Clearly Gabriel left out some details when he made this announcement to Mary. He neglected to tell her that when she was nine months pregnant, she and Joseph would have to travel nearly 100 miles through harsh and dangerous lands, only to have no place to stay leading her to give birth in a stable surrounded by animals instead of a room surrounded by family. But such was her trust in the Lord and her commitment to the mission God gave her that she did not waver. When the Son of God was still in her womb, she put him at the center of her life. She is a model for us, no matter how, circumstance, how difficult our circumstances may be, and for many this, during this pandemic have been very difficult indeed. But may Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, pray for us today and at this, this time in all of us. Now we have the now we have the profession of faith. And one of the features of the Christmas liturgy is that usually we bow when we get to the words and the Holy Spirit became incarnate of the Virgin Mary. But tonight, and during and at Christmas, we, we genuflect. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
true God from the true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the shepherds and creatures of the world gathered by the manger to honor your birth, O Lord, your faithful flock gathers today in joy and humility to praise you and to offer you these petitions. For the church, that we may be a visible sign of God's great love for humanity and in the continuing presence of Christ in our midst, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our political and world leaders, that their service be selfless and strive to raise up the marginalized, the poor, and the forgotten, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a safe and successful deployment of the coronavirus vaccine, may its effect help society, schools, and businesses return to a new normal where we are more compassionate and appreciative of one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have lost a loved one this year, that the joy and promise of Jesus' birth comfort them with this Christmas season and into the new year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all new families and expecting parents, that a child may inspire, inspire them, like Mary and Joseph, to share in the unconditional love of family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are separated from their families and friends this Christmas because of the coronavirus, may they be kept safe and persevere in the hope and, and, and that despite distances, our love and affection for one another is not lessened. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who need prayers, for the requests in our parish book of petitions, for our own intentions, we now remember in the silence of our hearts. For the service men and women whose names appeared in the gathering space, for those who are ill, including Josephine Fang, for those on the St. Francis prayer chain, and for all those who have no one else to pray for them, and the parishioners of St. Francis for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Marie and James Galvin and Don Smith, as well as Monsignor John Scanlon of the Archdiocese of Washington, and for their family members and friends who continue to mourn their passing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now the prayer of the faithful this evening concludes with the prayer of blessing for the manger or the nativity scene. God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation you have made manifest your love. When our need for a Savior was great, you sent your Son to be born of the Virgin Mary. To our lives he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, and love. Lord, bless all those who look upon this manger. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise up our thoughts of him who is God with us and Savior of all lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept our sacrifice and your hands for the praise and glory of the name, for our good and for the law of the Holy Church. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly, for knowing that in them we make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. When the mystery of the, of the Word made flesh, new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds, so that, as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at his command, we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. As we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. But we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, who may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis of Assisi, your holy patron, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
Be pleased to confirm the faith and charity of your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Wilton our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, who you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
We invite all those and encourage all those who are able uh, to join tomorrow morning from 10.30 to 11 o'clock and to receive the Eucharist and a communion service that will be held in the gathering space. That's 10.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, Christmas morning, uh, in the gathering space. And thank, thank all of you for your support of our parish offering each week, either through dropping off or mailing your offertory contributions or by giving through Faith Direct. I invite you to consider a one-time gift to our parish by texting the donation amount to 301-804-2584, that is 301-804-2584, and cho choosing option three, a Christmas gift. You can also sign up to support St. Francis online through Faith, Faith Direct by clicking on the Give link on the parish website, www.sfa.dw. Dot org. Thank you. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Bow for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the virtue, with the light of virtue, and let the church say Amen. 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 May God, who willed that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor, and make you sharers with the church in heaven, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.